The photos are incredible. My biggest gripe with this camera is if you only have $100 and you wanna learn how to take high quality photos, I'm gonna tell you why the NEX5 from Sony might be the best option even in 2023. My family is about to leave in the morning for Disneyland. How fun is that gonna be? That's gonna be awesome. But I wanted to make sure before I leave on that trip that I film this video for you guys so I can have something out for you over the weekend. The NEX5 is a very interesting camera with a lot of weird quirks where, um, you know, it's decent in some regards and then really bad in others. So I wanna talk about what $89 can get you, how much camera can you get for under $100, and there's actually a few cameras that I'm gonna talk about on this channel over time um, that are under that $100 price point for beginners or even pros alike, like me. Like I have several camera bodies, I'm in the Sony ecosystem, but I think there's a place in my life for a camera like the NEX5. So we're gonna talk about that in this video. Okay, let's first talk about the good stuff, okay? There, Cause there are some good things about this camera. First being the photos are incredible. The photos are really good. This is a 14.2 megapixel camera, okay? So not a ton of megapixels, but that's not a problem really in the modern era where everyone's viewing on social media. You're not blowing this up on big, televisions or um, yeah, TV screens, billboards and such, you're gonna be, be viewing this on a smartphone device, most likely the photos that you capture with this. 14 megapixels is plenty to get the job done. So don't worry about that. As far as ISO capabilities, you can shoot at 200, 400, 800 and 1600 pretty reliably on this guy. Once you get to the 3200 range or above, it falls apart pretty quickly after that. So the lower ISO values are gonna get you good results. Anything higher than that is not great for photos. What this camera really showed me as I looked at my current Sony ecosystem with my glass and my camera bodies is that you take a sensor like the NEX5 sensor, which is not a great sensor, it's fine, it's decent, it does a decent job. But when you pair that with a quality piece of glass, you get incredible results. Glass is what matters. Let's say you have $1,000 and you wanna get yourself set up to take high quality photos, okay? You have a few options. You can go the route of spending more money on your body or more money on your lens. The problem with spending more money on your camera body is that your camera bodies, you're gonna upgrade every few years or so. I mean, you might have a camera for several years, but the technology of these camera bodies really does increase over time exponentially. I mean, you take a look at what we had 13 years ago and what we have now, as far as camera technology, a wildly different versus lens technology has not iterated as much over time. So my recommendation to you would be, if you're not in the Sony ecosystem, a great way that you can get yourself what I call like a lens host, okay? Since it uses the E-mount lens system, you could spend $89 on a camera like this and then spend your other $910 on a quality piece of glass. A lens that I really like to pair with the Sony NEX5 has been the Sony 20 millimeter F 1.8 lens. This lens can be found used, I think I found it used actually for around $650 but I think newer, they're closer to like the $800 or $900 range. So right there, there's your thousand bucks. You buy the 21.8 in this camera and you can take that 20 millimeter piece of glass from body to body over time. So if you upgrade to the a7 IV or the A7S III or the FX30 or even the FX6, if you wanna be like a cinematographer one day and use a high quality cinema camera, you can use that 20 millimeter piece of glass on all of those bodies. As long as you take care of your lenses, it's gonna last for a super long time. This guy right here is a great lens host. Okay, that's enough about the photo side. And that's kind of where the good stuff about this camera ends because as you get in video, the video of this camera, the video quality, the video capabilities, it's all terrible. Before we go any further, if you feel like you're getting value out of this video, make sure you smash that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Over 75 to 80% of you are not subscribed to this channel. So please, if you wanna support what we're doing here, feel free to leave a like and a comment on this video and subscribe so you don't miss anything else. I'm gonna talk about some other NEX cameras here soon, like the NEX um, 5R and um, maybe the 3N I'm gonna try to get my hands on or maybe an NEX 7 or 6. Those are better for video. The NEX 5, my biggest gripe with this camera is you cannot do anything 
in manual video mode, okay? There's, it doesn't exist. There's no manual mode anything for video. The moment you hit record on your camera, you're just locked into whatever camera settings the camera decides to do. It's basically auto video and there's no other option, which is terrible. For me, I need to set all of my camera settings and it shoots in only 1080p, 30 frames a second, okay? So you can't change anything. You can't do 24, you can't do 60. It's you're locked in auto exposure and 1080p, 30 frames a second. That's all you get with this camera. I'm gonna show you a bunch of footage here on the screen that I shot with this camera and there's just a ton of artifacting, even in like an outdoor environment. This thing just doesn't have a good bit rate and doesn't shoot in good codecs to be able to get reliable video results. Also, there's no sort of like image stabilization on here. So when you're shooting on a piece of glass that doesn't have IBIS built into it, or, and then the camera definitely doesn't have stabilization, you're gonna get pretty poor performance if you're trying to walk around or vlog or do anything like that with this camera. Danny X5, not the ideal situation for um, video creators. Okay, here are some other rapid fire facts about this camera. It doesn't come with a flash. You can actually attach like this weird flash unit to the top of this. I wouldn't use a flash, don't worry about it. Uh, second would be the autofocus. The pro here is it does have autofocus and it does work most of the time. The con here is that it's pretty slow and unreliable in a lot of situations, especially low light. So if you're outdoors in a well-lit environment, autofocus will be fine. But if you're in more of a dark scene, it's not gonna work well for you. So the autofocus suffers in a lot of situations. The menu system on this is super old. I love the new Sony cameras. It's a lot more intuitive. This feels like you're using like, like a Game Boy Advance or something. In order to get to the ISO settings, you literally have to like go into the menu into like color and brightness and then change your ISO setting. I think that's a super strange way to do it. So uh, the menu, it gets a thumbs down for me. Another weird thing that I like about this camera is actually the way the shutter sounds. And in all of my like production quality, high quality cameras, I want them to have essentially the quietest shutter it can possibly have. And sometimes maybe even a silent shutter. Um, but I love the nostalgia of, just listen to this. That thing is awesome. I mean, my goodness, compare that to the A1. Wait, listen to this shutter. How beautiful it sounds, how smooth, how silky. It's actually crazy. Oh, it, it reached the buffer, it reached the buffer. And then listen to the A1. This is the cheapest and probably the lowest level NEX camera I would even consider purchasing. There are some other NEX cameras that I wanna talk about here on this channel, so make sure you subscribe if you haven't already so you can make sure you don't miss those videos when they do come out. Thanks so much, guys. I have more videos you can check out on this channel right here. Thanks again for stopping by. Much love.